issues thereof. Uh, okay, so what does the future hold for malware? Okay, there are some recent trends, so I want to cover some of these. Uh, people have developed encrypted, polymorphic, and metamorphic uh, malware, so we'll see why they do that, you know, and what the defenses against those things are. Uh, then we'll talk just a little bit about fast worms, uh, things like things like uh, Code Red and Slammer kind of inspired this, and this was a really hot topic not that long ago, but people don't really pay too much attention to it today, but it's still a potential potential threat. Uh, and this is kind of the same thing. And we'll look just briefly at uh, botnets, which is kind of the current uh, fad in uh, malware. So the bottom line is the future is bright for malware, which is bad news for the good, not good guys and good news for the bad guys, of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we'll also say a little bit about the future of detection, okay, what's going to happen there. Okay, so again, the point here is that signature detection is the king, right? Everybody's using signature detection. You're a virus writer. You're not a fool, right? You know people are using signature detection. You're spending a lot of effort to develop this malware. You don't want it to be detected. So the question is, how do you evade signature detection? How do you hide your signature? Well, kind of a good thought here is to encrypt the virus, okay, encrypt the executable file. If you encrypt a file, if you use a different key, what happens to the bits in those files? They look completely different, okay? It's just sort of like random bits when you encrypt a file, right? And in particular, it's not code anymore, it's just some bits, right, that you've encrypted. So the code that you want to scan, if you're the virus scanner, you can't see because it's encrypted. Well, great, we've evaded signature detection, we're good to go, right? Okay, what's the problem here? You have to decrypt the code, okay? You can't execute encrypted code, right? For the same reason that it hides the signature, okay? So you have to decrypt the code. So built into, the, into this encrypted virus is a decryptor. Okay, so now you're the, you're the virus scanner. You're working at Symantec. How are you gonna detect these guys? You're gonna look for the decryptor. Okay, you, can, you could use you know, basic signature detection to look for the decryptor. Now it might be harder to detect because it's relatively simple. We're talking about simple encryption algorithms here, really just to mask the bits. We don't care about how strong the cryptography is or anything like that. We may encrypt, we may compress. There's packers that just compress files and do accomplish the same thing. But the point is there's some code that gets the whole thing started, you know, that decrypts the file to start with so that it can execute. We can look for that code because that code's not encrypted, right? Okay, so why don't we just encrypt that code? And then, oh, wait, there needs to be another code. Oh, we'll encrypt that too. Okay, so, okay, you, you got it. Okay, so, um, you know, it's a good approach in the, I mean, in principle, it's a very good approach, okay? It would hide the signature, uh, make it uh, so you can't get a signature. But the problem is you have this uh, decryptor code. And this is actually used in a lot of viruses today. Okay. So how do you detect? You look for the decryptor code. And this is basically a you know, standard signature detection problem. But the encryption can be really simple. You know, basically a typical thing is that they just take a fixed byte and they XOR it with all the bytes in the file. That's a really terrible cipher, right? It's like, a, it's like a one time pad used over and over and over and over and over and over on every byte. Okay, so or a simple, you could think of it as a simple substitution. It's a really, really lame cipher, but it hides a signature. Okay, and that's good. But it doesn't take very much code to do that, to encrypt with an XOR or to decrypt with an XOR. I mean, it's literally you know, one line of code you know, in high level language to do that, a one loop, right? So it's harder to detect. So you may get a lot of false alarms and you may have more work to do when you do the scans to make sure you don't burden the user, user with these false alarms. Okay, yeah, and why not decrypt? Encrypt the decryptor code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the bottom line here is, you know, really, uh, what this accomplishes is it slows down the virus scan. So this is why your virus scan takes forever because virus writers are doing stuff like this. Okay. 
It's probably not going to make your virus undetected, but it's going to slow it down, make it harder to detect. Okay, so now you're the virus writer. You really like this encrypted virus idea, right? Sounded like a great idea, but they're detecting it. So what could you do to maybe soup this up a little bit? Make it even harder to detect. Well, okay, what's being detected here? The decryptor, okay? So how about if we don't just have one fixed decryptor, how about if we have a thousand different decryptors or a hundred thousand different decryptors? Okay, now what happens from the virus scanner's point of view? Okay, you don't just have a sing single de a single signature to detect your virus. There's hundreds or thousands of signatures to detect your virus, and each of those has lots of false alarms. You're putting a huge burden on the virus scanner at this particular point. Okay, so that's kind of the next.